would. Uh, he was kick ass would do it, doing the things he knows, but when he didn't know anything, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. really fun as this fish out of water gag. He didn't know how to drink coffee properly and stuff like that. Uh, that great scene of Mr. Vampire with him and Ricky Hoy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Dead of the Deadly is great, directed by Wu Ma, and uh, Long Arm of the Law, uh, directed by Johnny Mac, is this. I love this. It's a fantastic, like, also predating predates mainly Ringo Lam's and Kirk Wong's style of filmmaking, I would say. Not really John Woo. And is, the first movie is really great, and I am sad to... Uh, it was four movies in Long of the Law series, uh, Unconnected. Long of the Law, Saga 2, Part 3, and then Underground Express was the fourth one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Johnny Mac, I wish had directed more times, rather than his brother Michael Mac, who I don't think is as talented. Uh, Mr. Vampire, of course, he produced and uh, re- really oversaw like these trends as well in Hong Kong. He brought out, um, he brought out the likes of Lam Ching Ying, bro- made him break, and uh, in in a genre movie, Mr. Vampire, that combined the comedy and the ghost horror, Hong Kong style horror. Uh, like the, it was the ultimate attempt that worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spiritual Boxer tried it, Lao Garlung, Encounters of the Spooky Kind tried it, Sam Hong's film. Mm-hmm. Which is great classic, but Mr. Vampire made it explode, and I, there's a tons of tons of characters that Sam had made uh, successful. And uh, l- later on, as the 80s went uh, went away, the the Sam output got less and less. He produced movies uh, at Bojon Films, uh, Pedicab Driver, Pantyhose Hero, F- Slickers vs. Killers, and uh, the last of them was the questionable Don't Give a Damn. <laughs> mm-hmm. With uh, Yumbu and uh, Take- Takeshi Kaneshiro in uh, black people makeup. Oh Lord! Oops! <laughs> wow! Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an see, endurance test. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying. It's like watching scenes like this where hospital staff are physically <laughs> like poking and pushing the boy boot. <laughs> just. <laughs> it's really a bit. Uh, you want uh, your friend to live? Cry, bitch! Cry. <laughs> I wonder if that's the Cantonese translation. I wish it was, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, Michael Mew, Mew Qi, mm-hmm. lying dead here, or oh, is about to be about to be re uh, uh, reanimated. Reanimated, I was about to say, is about to be about to be re resuscitated. Uh, he he was like a, originally a furniture making apprentice, but like many Hong Kong uh, personas out of the entertainment industry, he joined TVB, a training program at TVB. Uh, Ringo Lam even joined that as an actor initially, uh, but uh, gradu- graduated to director eventually. Uh, and Michael Mew again uh, became part of the like Five Tigers at TVB with uh, Ken Tong, Felix Wong, Tony Leung, and Andy Lau. And uh, they-, they were like the popular actors at TVB and made series either all together or uh, only a few actors were in a few uh, 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 particular series, like Legend of the Condor Heroes. Which I think is on DVD nowadays, uh, subtitled. Wolf Fung just appeared in here. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll get back to Mike and Yuki. I. Uh... <laughs> I think for me, Wu Fung was always one of those noble actors. Well, he he was always a noble side actor, and he never really had like enough uh, presence to be like a lead actor. Well, for <laughs> the movies I've seen him in. Yeah, pr- probably uh, in his old, in his younger days, he was more of a lead actor, more handsome. Yeah. But most notable, really, in like the 80s, it has to be uh, Mr. Vampire 2, where he played uh, the role as the father of the children that took in the stray vampire. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. I uh, mm-hmm. thought about that. Mm-hmm. And I think he was known for directing like a handful of movies uh, over the 70s as well. Mm-hmm. But most recently, he was obviously known for his last appearance on the silver screen in Adrian Kwok's 6 a.m., Right, one of those, I believe. Uh, Is it the boys? No. Oh, uh, uh, it might be. I don't. Know. It, I think it. it, it uh, I think it's like that Stevie Chung and other twat, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're no, they're no giant for those people. <laughs> or, or Andy Laos. Mm-hmm. But you're right. I remember Wolf Wong again. He appeared briefly in movies, and to me, when I thought about him, he he was played inspectors a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like. Inspector West Skirts, Haunted Cop Shop, Operation Pink Squad. Always Inspector Wu or Inspector uh, <laughs> Bong. Uh, and I kind of like that. Uh, he wasn't funny at all times, even though he was trying to be crazy, crazy funny. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, 
it's a comforting feeling when watching 80s Hong Kong cinema. Yay! This guy's in it. This mm-hmm. woman's in it. It's always one of these great comforts when you watch Hong Kong cinema and, and you do see all the familiar faces and then you're like overwhelmed with movies like The Banquet and Millionaire's Express. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was what's really bad but fun to watch everyone in it. Mm-hmm. Um, this, exper- <laughs> did, did this experiment, by the way, I, I'm not too sure that he had a say in it, uh, Mewky Wise character. Mm-hmm. He's just into the experiment now, wearing his virtual reality goggles. Yeah, which just basically looks like an alarm clock and some scuba gear. <laughs> and it moves fast too. I think there's a lot of continuity errors in this movie. I think it's on, on five minutes in some of the next uh, next shots here, but may, maybe time has passed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, by the way, it always helps when actors have the same name in films as they have in real life, <laughs> because I yeah. think. Uh, Eric Tsang is Tsang uh, Xiao Wei, which is essentially his Tsang Chi Wai is his Chinese name in reality. But, but they have different uh, English names. And Yuki Wai's character is called David. Mm-hmm. And uh, Eric Tsang's character is called Halley. Oh. Uh, in the English subtitles, I don't think they pronounce that in, uh, in Kanto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, we'll get back to Yuki Wai a little bit because he's just trying to focus on who? Someone far more important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For now, anyway. Emily Chu Boy. Uh, do you remember her from any movies in the eighties? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I have to correct you. The very lovely Emily Chu. Um, yes. Um, let's see. A Bear Tomorrow. She she was. Wait. Yeah. Could I? I was just. I'm going to murder right away and say get her mistaken for some other chick. But no, uh, she did play uh, Leslie Chung's partner in A Bear Tomorrow, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, one and two. <laughs> One and two, yep. I really one of those faces that only stay for a little while on the scene. Uh, uh, it's like, yeah, but, but, but she's part of some classics. Mm-hmm. Uh, aside from those two, uh, she's, uh, as, uh, she's Alex Mann's partner in Rouge. Uh, she's part of the couple that meets Anita Moy's uh, ghost in Rouge. And uh, she's really good in that. And uh, I liked her alongside Ken Cheng in Wong Chung's uh, uh, Shaw Brothers actor Wong Chung's directed Vampire's Breakfast uh, and uh, really it, also if you see like the movie Ghostly Love on like VCD with a category 3 rating and see that Emily Chu is in it she's not in on, on that action nah, nah. Uh, it's clearly one of those movies where they shot a lot of stuff you know uh, the, the, the fleshy stuff if yeah. you will was shot with and everyone else, and Emily Chu was in it occasionally, but uh, she she gets top billing, I think, in that film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, no no luck there, folks. No luck luck there, guys. Mm-hmm. But I I am scanning over her uh, filmography now, and <laughs> it looks like maybe maybe the last few appearances in her career kind of went a little dodgy. Like she did star in like brilliant films like Bear Tomorrow. Um, I could have swore she was in. Double, not double dragon, twin dragons, but I might be mistaken. Mm, I don't remember from that. Heart of the dragon, heart of the dragon. All oh, right, because she was pretty. Was I uh, anyway? Uh, if her last couple films were also known as Angel Whore, Angel or Whore, and Visa. To right, Hell. fucking on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I could see why she kind of stopped after just only being in the business for a decade. Yeah. Well, that's prob- the thing. Probably what, marriage. Uh, exactly, that's what happens to a lot of uh, Hong Kong ladies. <laughs> they do usually find, I, I, I am cruel enough to say, their meal ticket out. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens, and the, the ma- man usually doesn't want their woman to work in that regard. And, uh, and, and if you're lucky, you've had a great career and end on a high note. Uh, Veronica Yip is one such example. I think uh, she started in like category three movies, like Pretty Woman and Take Me. That's a great, <laughs> great title. Uh, but she like developed into this great actress and ended on a high note. I think uh, with some very, very good performances. Uh, <laughs> and it all has to do with this scene: Mu Qi trying to get into Emily Chu's panties. Mm-hmm. It's the reason he's in this experiment, isn't it? Yep. Again, it's the fucking horny dogs. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> An echo of a lot of Hong 